we've heard a lot about addiction and technology, but this is something um, a little bit larger that you guys are launching. So take me through it. So we're launching a major new national campaign, The Truth About Tech. The point is to educate the public, opinion leaders, government officials, and the tech industry about the impact of technology on kids' brains and how this is affecting our society, both pro and con. I've known you for many years, and you've been talking about this for a really long time. Take me back to when you first started thinking, okay, we've got to start paying attention to the impact of technology. I started working on these issues in 2013. All of these companies are competing to get attention. They're not going to stop doing that. It's not enough that you use the product. I have to reach deeper down the brainstem, hook you, and create an unconscious habit or an addiction to hold on to that 30 minutes I currently own in your day, if I'm Facebook or if I'm Snapchat. There's a real existential threat, I think, if we let this continue. And so we're doing a really big campaign around it with the truth about tech and um, bringing insider voices together to understand how it works. When you look at the business model for these companies, they are built on getting us to pick up our phone more. We live in this attention economy. So can these tech companies really make changes without fundamentally shifting the way that their business works? We're not predicting overnight success. This is a multi-year effort and we're going inside the tech company. And we believe that long term, both from the bottom up with grassroots public support, but from the top down with intelligent legislative efforts, the combination can make fundamental change, explain the truth about tech, and make really positive solutions. Why now do you think are the people who created technology beginning to talk about the dangers of it? Because it certainly seems like a very specific moment. People are recognizing that technology is a political actor. It's one of the largest, and perhaps the largest, cultural force in the world. Because 1.5 billion people use YouTube, that's about the number of notional followers of Islam. These products are completely unaccountable to human interests. People in the tech industry know all of this is happening now. And so it's now just a matter of getting honest about how we fix it. What do you tell parents um, who don't exactly know how much screen time their child should have, who worry their kids are addicted? So what do you tell parents who are asking that? I think some simple things like right now, if you're listening to this and you're a parent, are turn off all notifications on your phone or your kid's phones, except for when a human being, a person, wants your attention. That's one simple change you can make today. Another one that uh, has become very popular just recently is turning your phone into grayscale. I don't know if you can see that, but um, if you make your phone gray, it takes out all those chip-like like slot machine rewards. It has a huge impact on feeling like your phone is more of a tool and less like an addictive substance. Do you think we can put the genie back inside the bottle? Uh, I don't think it's about putting it back in the bottle, it's about redesigning the genie to come out. I think this is game over unless we fix it. I think that we have to fix this because I actually think when you realize that every time you open up that blue Facebook icon, you just activated a supercomputer that's going to play chess against your mind to figure out what's the perfect thing I can show you. And it's only going to get better and better and better at doing that. And when you realize that you're bringing a knife, like a, you know, millions of year old evolutionary hardware, you know, up to bat against a supercomputer, you're, you're gonna lose.